In March 1938, the residents of a village in northern Chile witnessed a strange phenomenon that was initially thought to be a meteorite fall, but it later turned out that the fallen object was not a meteorite at all. In different eras, scientists from China, Italy, and Germany developed various projects of rocket projectiles and missiles that could be used as weapons. In the USSR, however, the idea of launching a rocket to the moon was proposed by the designer Fyodor Fyodorovich Superon. It is claimed that in size, Superon's rocket was comparable to the Spaskaya Tower. The team of cosmonauts, as they are called in the film, consisted of four people, Ivan Karlamov, a hero of the Civil War and pilot, Kazan Vagrat and swimmer Kani Fatikov, a girl named Nadezhda Svetlaya, and a dwarf actor from the circus, Mikhail Roshchin, nicknamed Mankor. Roshchin was taken in case the rocket compartment had to be built small, and he was long considered the main contender for the space flight. About 1.5 million people, both Stakhanovites and GPU employees, were involved in the manufacture of the rocket and the preparation of the cosmonauts. Stakhanovite blacksmith Pimanov forged bushings for the future rocket without brakes and did it so persistently that he even broke the press. Future space technology is tested on animals. For example, pioneers rode a duckling on a centrifuge made from a bicycle wheel, making it experience overload in five Earth norms. Testers give a piglicagir to make it easier to tolerate weightlessness, dress it in a spacesuit, and shoot it out of a cannon, and astronaut candidates play with a monkey named Duska, who undergoes tests with them. The final choice falls on Ivan Karlamov, who is to become the first cosmonaut of the USSR. He is taken away from a date with a girl with great difficulty, and this scene is accompanied by a fight of a drunken Karlamov with the patrol. On the night before the rocket launch, the members of the cosmonaut team play the guitar and drink, while Karlamov stays with Nadezhda for a while. The rocket was launched on March 16, 1938, from a secret cosmodrome near Nyazepetrovsk, where the rocket was delivered by four locomotives. Karlamov was supposed to wear a special lead spacesuit in which he could only lie down in the conditions of terrestrial gravity while being in the rocket. The launch frames represent a vertical panorama. First, the rocket preparing for launch is shown, in the man module of which Karlamov should be placed, then the designer's supper on over T, and then the workers who service the rocket. Finally, the long-awaited launch takes place, which everyone greets with jubilation. Then events do not go according to plan, part of the rocket's cladding breaks off during takeoff, and a few minutes later, communication with the ship and Karlamov is interrupted. Supran tries to find the rocket, going to the Crimea with Fatikov, but fails and runs abroad, and the special services are instructed to destroy all information about the space program and eliminate witnesses in the form of members of the cosmonaut team. The launch bunker was filled with cement, and numerous documents and films were burned in ovens by special services. In 1968, it was discovered that Supran had fled to South Africa and became a caretaker of an old military cemetery in the suburbs of Cape Town. The KGB followed him for several months before Supran died his own death. An NKVD employee who was also monitoring him tells about Supran's fate. He does it reluctantly, evading questions. Sleeping Mikhail and Nadezhda die in a dormitory room from poisoning with poisonous gas, which was launched there by NKVD employees. Fatikov, on the other hand, gets dysentery and ends up in a Crimean hospital, then moves to another and lives with a girl for some time, fearing to return. Studying archival data, Russian documentarians go to the site of the mysterious object's fall in Chile, which could have been a rocket, but find almost nothing the wreckage of the fallen apparatus disappeared for unknown reasons. Chileans tell the documentarians rural legends about what happened and sell them the remains of the apparatus, a fragment of the instrument panel from the rocket for $120. A year and a half after the rocket launch, a man who came on foot from China was detained by special services. The stranger turned out to be Ivan Karlamov, who received a skull brain injury and lost the ability to speak coherently. He was sent to a psychiatric hospital. He could not answer questions clearly, but the investigation reconstructed his route from Chile to mainland China, which he traveled alone. Treatment did not produce any results, despite the care of one of the nurses who claimed that Ivan tried to write some letters to higher authorities, but she did not send any letters out of fear for his life. In the end, Ivan escaped from the hospital and disappeared. Despite the participation of many people in the development of the Kromov case, the NKVD did not find the fugitive. Later it turned out that in 1946 he joined the troupe of the Ulyanovsk Circus, where he unsuccessfully searched for Mikhail Roshchin.
In the circus, he performed a patriotic number in the image of Alexander Nevsky based on the eponymous film by Sergei Eisenstein, his hero chased German knights played by dwarfs. In 1951, Karlamov left the circus, and his traces were finally lost. The only survivor of the Fatikov squad got a job as a props master at the Zoological Museum of St. Petersburg and began creating moving models of insects. It was his memories that restored the chronology of the rocket launch events, and together with the director, he watched archival films. The film crew, which studied super on surviving drawings, still creates a working, but reduced copy of the rocket on a scale of 135, and tests it outside the city to check the hypothetical possibility of such a flight with the technologies available at that time. When launched, the rocket explodes without taking off the ground. It turns out that at the crash site, a film was found that captured Karlamov in a spacesuit during the flight and the lunar surface with the landing module of the ship on which USSR was written.